Hey people, how you doing? Tuesday, the 29th of August. Got on my an old RAF t-shirt. I don't, I don't even have the new design. There's a couple of designs of RAF shirts that I don't have. They just sell out almost immediately. Whew. So I will end the video um, doing some self-promotion regarding RAF, but I'll start. That um, <clears throat> mentioning a couple of uh, musicians who have passed away. Um, the lead singer of the Epigees, I don't have any of their records, but I, I want to mention them because um, there's a direct connection there's a direct... I was going to look up the uh, guy's name right quick. But the Epigees, it was at the Epigees show in Omaha. The one time that I know that they came to Omaha and I went to the show, that's when I met the guitarist in RAF, Paul Murky. Um, I'm looking for his name, Epigees. Oh, well. Oh yeah, John Kesdy. That's his name, John Kesdy. They were really good. Um, I didn't have money to buy at the show and never saw any of the records at a time when I was like, okay, I'm going to buy it. But that show was um, significant. It was memorable. It was... They have a... They have a... Um, punk background but what I saw was more than punk it was inspiring and they were musically very interesting and that was the show where I ran into Matt with Paul and I had been running into them well actually I'd been running into Matt in particular Matt Miller the original lead singer of Aurea after working with him in the hospital as a patient I started to see him at shows but it was interesting it was just at that time when the underground punk uh, national touring explosion happened and everybody not everybody but a lot of folks were coming through Omaha I was going to all, all the shows literally and kept running into Pat and Matt and he said we need a bass player and I said I can't I can't work with you you were an ex-patient it was at the Epigee show and how I was feeling and how it was perfect timing because I sensed about Paul when Matt introduced me to Paul. This kid's about, he was just a kid. They were kids, see? They were teenagers, literally, when I met them. But something about Paul's countenance screamed music. And I said, okay, I'm going to give this a chance. No regrets. So rest in peace, John Kesdy. But I also hear that Brian McBride of Stars of the Lid, a unique band, has passed away. And young, 50, only, you know, like 53 years old. That's super young. Why are people dying? This is the only thing I have on, on vinyl by Stars of the Lid. Avec Laudanum unique band and I have this one by them on CD stars of the lid and their refinement of the decline unique sound um, almost at, it's at times ambient it's mostly quiet they use strings on some of the records um, they don't sound like anyone else, but it's long music that it's best for you to have time to absorb it. It's um, And it's beautiful, too. Atmospheric, ambient does fit, but it's not all ambient. Um, never got to see Stars of the Lid, but I think they're from Chicago, and I've been to Chicago, and I know so many Chicago people. I wouldn't be surprised if I'd been in his company and didn't know it. I found that out after the fact about some other 
people who, over time, their prominence in music um, grew, and then I realized, oh, geez, I remember meeting you way back when, or I was hanging out at this party, and you were there. One of those people is Elliot Smith. I must admit that I, in my late teens and early 20s, there were periods where I was polysubstance abusing. I was just a mess, you know, I was just doing everything. And I've had people come up, not come up, but reemerge in my life later and tell me, don't you remember doing such and so and such and so? And they're giving all these details and I don't remember none of it. So I know that I can't remember how or where, but I know I've hung out with Elliot Smith at least once, if not a couple times. You know, it's, I'm not proud to say it was um, substance abuse related, not just smoking weed, okay? Because I used to do everything. But Stars of the Lid, Brian and then John from Effigies, rest in peace, folks. Rest in peace. Otherwise, um, I'll keep it simple. There's so much that I can always say, folks. But I had been thinking about this album, Last Splash, by The Breeders. I am not exactly sure what brought it up on my uh, radar again, but I had been thinking about this record, wanting to hear it and thinking, well, I know I have it, but I bet it's buried in the closet. And then yesterday I looked to see if by chance I had it alphabetized, and I did yes, so I could play it. This is a really good album. The Deal Sisters. I've seen the Pixies. I haven't seen the Breeders. The Breeders played here last year at the Outlandia Festival, but I wasn't interested, so I didn't go. This is a really good album. I mean, it really is. And it doesn't all sound the same. Divine Hammer is one of the songs I really like on here, and I just want to get along. I like that. I've met Kelly Deal with her band R Ring when they came through uh, not too long ago, not too many years ago. I forget actually. And um, all right, yeah. So here's some interesting news from the band. I'll jump to that in a second. But uh, oh yeah, it was um an interview or something where I was finding out about some of the lyrics on the on about Cannonball. Because everybody insists that the song is about Frank Black or, you know, <clears throat> Black Francis. It could be, but she also said she was reading this book about the Marquis de Sade and her explanation of that was like, well that that fits I'll accept that. Something else I, I endeavored to play yesterday, and it didn't go down well, but I want to talk about it because it has, again, music is, is, is a living thing. Hamiet blew it, blew it with Marcelo Meli and Don Moyet. Bars. Hamiet blew it plays the baritone sax, and that's what it was. I just, this kept catching my eyes when I would be out in the living room in the, it was just sort of sticking out, I said, okay, that means play it. And it was jarring. I kept thinking, is this on the wrong speed? I haven't played this album many times since buying it. It was because of the, of the baritone sax. I had to go through a couple tracks to find one and say, okay, okay, okay. I can settle in on this. It's a good album. But it's a challenge. He's playing some, uh, like, for example, there's a slow ballad on there, and he's playing it in this deep baritone, you know, register, and it's like, this is weird. But that's, um, that's cool. That's the power of music. I need to say this on behalf of Arvo Zylo because he was asking me if I had gotten these CDs yet from him. And I'd mentioned these in passing because my first impressions weren't weren't very weren't very weren't very 
good, I have to say. So I told him I need to come back to these. My first impression was, was, you know, so this, I'm showing them, if you see this Arvo, I endeavor to, to give these a proper listen today. My first impression was, oh, I used to do stuff like this. And the thought was, I like some of what I've done better, but let me get back to it, okay? Okay. <laughs> I appreciate you folks who send stuff to me to review, but you must accept my, you don't must, but I must be honest. I'm not going to say something nice about something that if I don't mean it, I can't do it. So, regarding the RAF album, I'm very, very proud of it. Here it is, No Salvation. I've got a few black vinyl copies signed by the whole band. Let me know when you buy it. If you buy it, if you want a signed copy, I've got, it looks like maybe eight of these. And these are rare because the drummer, Tim Cox, does not live in Omaha. He lives in Arizona. So I just can't run out and get more copies signed by all the band. The copies that I have that are signed by all five of us are a rarity. Get one. <clears throat> all of the, all of the maroon colored vinyl albums with that we signed or sold and on top of that this message was just from a local record store I'm gonna go ahead and honor it I have about 40 copies left of the maroon but after I do this business deal I'm gonna have to say there'll probably be 35 um, the local store Recycled Sounds is wanting to know if they can get any more colored maroons. I'm, I will let them have five more at the most if he wants them. So, likely there will still be some for sale on Friday for Bandcamp Friday. But I'll say this, if you want a maroon colored edition of the album... I'm going to say there's only 25 left now, and I'll make the adjustment on the Bandcamp after I do the deal with um, Recycled Sounds, because they want some. Also, just to sweeten the deal, I've been throwing in an RAF Bleed sticker, the song Bleed from the album, and I just realized I've got some copies of our set list from the album release show. And it's Kelly who does our graphics and is our lead singer. He does this stuff. He's so cool. Do you want a set list? I don't think I'll put them in randomly. I won't. I've only got five. One, two, three, four, four five, six. So if you would like a set list with your album, let me know when you order. I'll put it in, okay? Okay family it sounds like good things are happening out in California some 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 job news possibly or it sounds like things are moving in that direction for people and I'm happy about that okay let me get off the phone and and get to business I have another stack of records and CDs that were sold yesterday going out in the mail today I'm, I've set tracking numbers for every record on my, um, the, interestingly, yesterday, I'll just also show you, because this is, on the list of all the, uh, you know, this is my receipt from the post office yesterday, there's only one, uh, address on here that I, um, have it reconnected with um, Schenectady, New York. If you happen to see this, for some reason I can't find your um, 
order to send you the tracking number. But every every other um, order, I was able to send you the tracking number. On the Muse, I ended up having to send out a couple of CDs because I didn't, and they got lost. But I have proof that I've sent the records, and I hope you get them. Okay, because, you know, it's not... It's, it's sending out two records when you've only paid for one. You know, that'll put me under. Also, I want to thank Johan, the fella in Norway who bought the album because the postage was ridiculous it ended up being $31 to send him but he bought two albums and a CD so the package was a little heavy but when I informed him of the uh, in you know because I only charged 20 bucks postage he happily sent me he only needed to send me you know $11 to make the difference he just sent a whole number 31 with a very nice note about his thought how he thought this is one of the best punk albums he's heard in years friends over in England Germany and around the world I would love for you all to buy and have this album I don't have a, a distribution outlet for this vinyl it, it's not Martin Archer who helped me with the muse that was a wonderful favor but he explained so I'm not approaching him again because that's not what he did. That's not how he does business. So unfortunately, right now, folks, overseas, if you want the album, and you really ought to have it, it's world class. You'll you'll have to pay that shitty postage. It's not my fault, but you ought to have this album. And um, that's what I have to say about it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so let me know. You want a set list as well with your album? And like I said, I've got about eight copies black that are signed by all band members. After that, if you ask me to sign it, I can do that. Okay, I'm, s I'm still excited about all this. Still kind of coming down from the show on Saturday. In so many ways, it was life affirming beyond just playing the music, but so much French friendship. There's a, a for me a, a a feeling of family with a large part of our audience because they were kids when the when I joined the band back in the '80s, and I felt protective of them. You know, I did. Um, I've told it before where there was a story. I think the guy was at the, the show. I see it because I forget he didn't remind me. But years ago, we were having a play in at some show at the lift ticket, which is now the waiting room. And this kid was, you know, small framed. And there was some bigger punk um, intimidating him and um, pushing him around in a mean way during moshing. I jumped off the stage and bashed him with my bass, you know, to protect this kid. I had forgotten that until this young man, I ran into him years later after he was an adult. Not even at a show, I don't think. Or was it, it was something like that. It was like, and when he told the story, it popped back in my mind. I said, oh, I remember now. And it's like, I didn't hurt the big guy. I got him off of him. I bopped him good, but I didn't, I didn't crack his head open. I'd have been happy to, you know, don't fuck with my people, you know. So this sense of um, family and caring about people, it's strong for me. It is. It's more than just the music. That's why when I saw so many black people at the show uh, Saturday, I just had to talk about it. It just warmed my heart because back in the 80s, I was the only for the longest until a, what, another kid named Curly started coming to shows. I was the only person of color, the only. So I love the development, and I love being part of that. You know, being part of being part of the welcoming wagon. You know, this music is for all of you. Last thing I'll say, and it is still about RAF. Last music I played last night was I played the RAF on my stereo here. 
I punch the loudness, you know. Um, I make my music, I mix my record so that I don't have to punch the loudness. I like full, and the record is full. But Paul has a different, like a lot of people, you know, he's not bass oriented. So for me to get the bass the way I wanted, I had to punch the loudness. It's all there. But to get the boom, almost, I call it, to me it's the black boom. I call it the black boom. Bass it, that's get up in your ass, that's black boom. <laughs> that's what I do. Put that black boom up in your ass. And that, and that when I play, the record sounds great. It really does. Okay, I'm rambling. Get your copy today. Take care, people.